Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be taking a look at Power Comics, uh, Brian Bullen and Dave Gibbons' like first comic efforts, man. The stuff that was done here was able to be used as portfolio pieces for uh, 2018 issue number one, you know, to get these guys on board from the jump. Uh, but before we b- before we launch into this, uh, Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to this uh, channel and watch the video to the end. It gooses the algorithm and pushes the video out to uh, to other people who might not be aware of uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel but are still into comic book YouTube content. I thought it would be fun to take a look at the first comic book efforts of uh, some of our favorite artists in, in comics, two guys that we've interviewed for the channel. And uh, this is this reprint was done by Eclipse Comics, which is pretty fun to think about what in the context of Eclipse Comics and some of the other British reprints. For instance, Miracle Man that came out, uh, who was called Marvel Man. Uh, originally, that comic did pretty well. Uh, that Alan Moore guy did some good comics that, that uh, sort of made him pretty popular here in the States. So maybe try to take two bites of the apple. This character's name is Power Man, but you can't call him Power Man because of Luke Cage. Power Comics. Shouts to the other great YouTube channel uh, about comics on uh, <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah, per- perfect for them. The colors on that cover are really great. I wonder if Bullen does the covers himself. Yeah, well, this is a this is a Dave Gibbons for sure. Oh, it is. This is Gibbons for sure. Um, this looks like Gibbons, and I can't tell who did this. Maybe it, that's see, a this, third party. I think it could be super early uh, Bullen because because yeah, possibly. He's, he's reasonably rough here. They say a rising tide raises all ships, Jimmy, and cartoonist Kayfabe, the YouTube channel, is brought to you by the comic books that we make. Uh, We each have a bunch of stuff that's in print, so let's give it a quick run through, and Kayfabers, if you dig the channel, you dig our comics, Kayfabe affect these comics, let these publishers know that cartoonist Kayfabe is a force to be reckoned with, man. Uh, To begin with, my earliest graphic novel, WYSIWYG, Portrait of a Serial Hacker, follows the history of high technology from the phone system to WikiLeaks. Through the vessel of a single computer hacker, 288 pages. Back to print is the box sets and uh, new printings of each volume of Hip Hop Family Tree, which is my linear uh, sort of retelling of the history of hip hop and rap music. Four volumes in that set. I drew this stuff from 2013 to about 2015. After that comes X-Men Grand Design, where I take the history of X-Men, probably 8,000 pages of material, uh, mostly by Chris Claremont, miniseries, combine it all into one big uh, story, 240 pages of primetime X-Men comics. Get these volumes while they're still in print. There's an omnibus as well. The stuff that I've been putting my energy to lately is... Red Room Comics, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, The Anti-Social Network, This Trade Paperback is on stands today, collects the 2021 issues of Red Room, and lots of extra material in the back. Coming up in March is Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue number one, going to be coming out on a monthly basis, every issue completely self-contained. This is the cover that's going to be on the racks in the stores. These are the variants to go along with these comics, including the Jim Rug. By way of Robert Crumb, Zap Comics Zero cover. I'm going to go in reverse order, Ed, and start with Hulk Grand Design. This is my next book that's going to be available in comic shops everywhere starting in March, but you can pre order it now. This is a retelling of the Hulk history, celebrating 60 years of the Incredible Hulk coming in March, and uh, 10,000 pages distilled down into two oversized issues. And these are some of the variant covers that will be available for Hulk Grand Design Ed Piscor, Peach Momoko, Marcus Martin. And now, Jeff Darrow. So you can order any of these at your local comic shop. These are not retailer incentives, so just let the comic shop know which cover you want. Get all the covers if you want to. They won't cost anything extra. And uh, pick this up in March, but order it now. Next time you're at your comic shop, or call your comic shop. Let them know about Incredible Hulk Grand Design. You can also still get Street Angel, Deadly Girl Live from Image Comics, A Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard. This collects eight complete stories of the Deadliest Girl Alive and is available wherever books are sold. And The Plain Janes, my 500-page homage to shoujo manga about a group of high school 
kind of outcasts who start doing public art around their community and get all kinds of trouble as a result of that. Uh, one of the first young adult graphic novels, this thing actually began in 2005 and was just completed in 2019. So you can still pick that up, again, wherever books are sold. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. And it was supposed to be an oscillation. It was like Bolin will do one, Gibbons will do one, but Bolin's speed is very well known and it's documented on, I think, the original Gibbon shoot interview and the, the, the ball and shoot interview. So here it is, man. Nigerian comics. Yeah. Commissioned, uh, I guess a Nigerian publisher commissioned a publishing company in London to, to put these, to package these comics for them and then published in Nigeria. So yeah, you get a young, young Bolin and young Dave Gibbons. Like this should have been the start of Marvel comics for this, uh, this publisher. Yeah. Right. Like that's a pretty good bullpen you're starting with. Heck, and this is their earliest comics. He, some heck of a craft. It's unreal that this is what your early comics look like. I feel like nobody does early comics that look like this now. So interesting that those guys were kind of like raised on and cut their teeth on DC comics. You know, like those were popular comics to those guys. The Brits dug the DC. Might have spoke a little bit to that like lack of distribution that Marvel had because of DC for a while there. Yeah, I always feel like that that plays an influential part. Mm -hmm. Like, you like the stuff you can actually find. Right. But these look very solid. Like, um, it, it, it's obviously a far cry from what they achieve in, in their mature periods. But I don't see major shortcomings either. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Not even close, man. Shades of Sam Glansman Kona comics. Makes a lot of sense. I like this kind of stuff, like a, do some effect to put a drawing, a kid drawing on a chalkboard. Pretty good. So tight. Mm -hmm. So tight, man. It's one of the things you think about when Gibbons comes to mind. All right, that was a, that was a Gibbons effort, man. Let's take a look at uh, Double B. You know what? I wonder if they're lettering themselves. Uh, this is definitely uh, Dave Gibbons yes. lettering. This, I don't know. Man, this stuff looks sharp, too. It has that Silver Age... Like, it has that DC vibe to it. Yeah, a little bit of Neil Adams I see in some of these, like, in that face, especially. I feel like I even see Kubert. Mm -hmm. Kubert would hit this angle a bunch. Yeah, I can remember finding these in a dollar bin, having never heard of them. Right. And you see those names, and it's just like, what? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Talk about A-listers. It just lets you know that there's like this like rich history of comics out there that like we we just scratched the surface with the stuff that we know. This panel's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's so cool to see these guys that are obviously super talents. And even at an early part of their career, like you get these moments where they're just a great composition or a cool drawing or a cool figure. And it feels like there's quite a bit of those. When we start seeing this kind of stuff, like I'm I'm feeling that early period. Brian Ball and Judge Dredd kind of vibe. Which, by the way, I pre-ordered that Apex Edition thing. Like, when is that coming, 2000 AD? When are you sending <laughs> that? That shit was supposed to come out, like, in January. I think that's pushed to late March, too. Oh, really? Man, these paper shortages. Straight up tongue-in-cheek, Silver Age DC robot villain. I wonder if these were printed in black and white and if they knew they were being printed looks in black like and white it. because they, they're really providing a lot of uh, tone value. Yeah, it really looks textures. like it. Like, you never see Gibbons, like, hatch so much background and stuff. Start this one off with uh, Brian Balland. Man, he's good figured. Good figures. Keeping it simple for the readers, man. Got to know which order to read your panels. Yeah, the numbered panels. That's interesting. Reminds me of like old Sunday strips would have the numbered panels in the early part of the 20th century. The Silver Age, uh, I mean, the Golden Age comics would do that also. You know, the first Batmans and stuff. A fetus. I wonder how these things worked in Nigeria, if there was a fan base for them, if, if they were well received. Yeah, if, is this uh, an anthology thing, like where there's maybe five or six different kinds of comics that are packaged along with this? I also wonder if their format was a little bit different because it's pretty big margins at the top and yeah, bottom. Sure. You know, kind of like when you see those 2000 ADs reprinted in comic book size and it's like, oh, got to shrink it a little bit more. Totally. 
it's real fun seeing Brian Boland like just drawing comics, you know, like not really posing a bunch of stuff and mm-hmm. doing all that work that makes his stuff take so long to draw. And I think you see his stuff like that feels Boland like mm-hmm. to me. You know, there there are these glimpses that feel like Brian Boland, but I, I agree with you. I like the drawing. It's a a little bit rougher, I guess, but has a lot of energy, and I like that energy. Yeah, and they're still spectacular. Yeah, it really kind of bothers me. <laughs> you shouldn't do this whenever you're very uh, very new. Acme Pressman, that's Maxwell the Cat, that uh, Alan Moore strip that he had running for a long, long time. Even when he was doing Swamp Thing and, and Watchmen, he was still keeping up with that, just the way Matt Groening would do Life in Hell while handling a full plate of Simpsons merchandising and executive producing that show. It's almost more from Sin City. It really is, man. All right, man, Dave Gibbons. This is Silver Age. It's DC, beautiful. The lettering DC even looks like that. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at um, some Don Simpson pages recently. Yeah. And the lettering reminds me of this lettering. Yeah, you're right. You're right. His the lettering is pretty close. Is, is similar. Yeah, yeah. The Ames guide would be on the same point size. This is really clean art. It is. Man, that's cool. Yeah, it's, I mean, he's ready to go. Wow, there's some good stuff here. That's, that's great. <laughs> He's ready to go, man. This is one, a mark that you would never see in his work. Right. Funny and how that making... sheds, you know, like like you kind of figure out certain things that work and don't work, or you think works and, and, and doesn't. I think part of it, too, might just be the consequence of this being probably just in black and white. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's break up some, some background a little bit. Great explosions. Yeah, it all looks really good. Completely in line. Like, he's not using white media, really. I mean, there, there's a tiny, tiny little bit right there, but usually an explosion is an opportunity for cartoonists to sell you some stuff with uh, just pure white. Like this to the cartoon shorthand. There's your city background. <laughs> it works, I, right? I love it. I'm, I'm on board. No irony or anything in, in my uh, feelings for that. Good at volume. That feels like a big, heavy steel case. Mm-hmm. We're getting whimsical, Jimmy. <laughs> We're getting some whimsy. It never makes sense when a superhero picks somebody up to fly around. Right. I feel like the physics of that just always fall apart. Bill Cosby reference? You think? I don't know. It could be. Looks pretty close, man. Looks pretty close to that period, even. It's so ridiculous to think of Cosby as playing like a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> the Brown Hornet. This is Dave Gibbons again, right? Artist Dave Gibbons. Yeah, this feels different. Way rough, right? Yeah, I wonder if these are printed in, like, collected in different order than they were uh, done or if there were deadline issues. I think that's probably true. I think that this might be. Dave Gibbons saving the day over top of Brian Bolland or something because there are Brian Bolland kind of marks and, and compositions here. That feels continuity studios, doesn't it? A little bit. And if it were printed out of order, then you get to see that thing of like when you start drawing and you get you improve a lot quick. Now this is more Gibbons. <laughs> you improve a lot quickly. <laughs> <laughs> this is more Gibbons. So like the Brian Bolland just got shed a touch. And there are definitely flashes of this that feel like 2000 AD uh-huh. kind of moments. And now we're full Gibbons, but then we're back to these weird marks again. So I think he came through in the clutch. This is almost Ken Langriff. It is. I love this. This had to be done for black and white. There's yeah, such totally. a range of values and textures it had to be. I love these tiny yeah. figures. Like There's the one there and there's one right there. See, that's Boland-ish right there, man. Did they share studio? Do you remember one of them saying that? I'm trying to think of who all shared studio. You know, I think we asked them, and I forget what Brian said. Man, just run from studio to studio. (laughs) (laughs) I know Mick and Dave shared a space. This is all over the place. You know, there's 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 there's, a there's ball and pieces, but I mean, this is clearly like Gibbons. I do wonder, like, how this was seen. Like, was it published in the UK also, or partially, or? 
That's a good question. I, I don't I, I don't think so. He's called Power Bolt, not Power Man. And then you would always see, like, even in the Miracle Man comics that that came from Warrior Magazine, like you would see uh-huh. like how clearly that's not Dave Gibbons, you know, like it's just different lettering. But when you're a kid, you don't. This you, looks you never a knows. lot like uh, Dave Gibbons. Watchmen lettering. era, yeah, total Watchmen era font. Is that some screen tone being applied. New bits, huh? Or uh, yeah, is that shade? No, that's that's dots. That looks like that suffers from the reproduction a bit. Probably printed from the the pages rather than the original art look at the mania dude drawing jungle shit is so hard it shouldn't be because of a lack of obvious perspective you think that maybe if you do it a bunch you figure it out like it's probably shorthand although i would look at Bissett's stuff like whenever he would draw tyrant or or swamp thing and all that vegetation man i couldn't do that easily that was that was serious business i mean dude when you go on this tough when you go on a hike like i mean i always think about like how would i draw stuff and like when you go on a hike and you're looking around at all the vegetation and things it's there's no like hard, it's like smoke or water it's like yeah. there's no hard edge you can't see where one thing ends and the other thing begins and stuff and it, it just all works as a whole and my mind doesn't process it in just lines Man, that's a good that's a good page all around, top to bottom. Yeah, it is. I like seeing these things. Me too. It man. does feel like um like early Cuber graduate or something. Right. It's inspirational. Like knowing who these people are and, and what they grow into and seeing their proto efforts. That's that kind of thing that just lets you know. Stay hard on yourself. Stay drawing. You're you'll just you'll keep getting better. Yeah, and I see so many panels that are different than the way I think of putting together panels, and it makes me think, like, there's some stuff you can add there. Yeah. Some of the way, like, characters, you know, like these panels with two characters and kind of the way they're, you know, you got to present them both so they're readable, and, and there's a lot of that in this story. Yeah. Talk about more hard stuff to draw, dude. Dead fish in a still river. Hmm. Good luck. Yeah, and doing something like that where you have an edge of a face and shadow and then your background's dark, hard to figure out how to make that work. Yeah, and you just got to do that. Yes. Like, you just got to commit and say, you know what? It's comics. <laughs> what? I have Dishman comics. Yeah? Is it, is it an old uh, strip or something? I couldn't tell you anything more about it except that I can produce one or two issues <laughs> for my boxes. <laughs> how much you want to bet this shit was cheap? Will Eisner original art for sale? Couple yeah. hundred bucks a piece or something. Nine, no, it had a price there. Nineteen hundred dollars, I think. Yeah. Look, uh, each page signed by Eisner, nineteen hundred dollars. That's a good price in the eighties for for uh, a page. No, sir. Complete seven page story. Oh. For nineteen hundred dollars. <laughs> and it's a spirit. You know, it's a complete spirit story. Nineteen hundred. That's a good investment. Wow. That's what be- would that be worth now? That's better than Bitcoin. God damn it. Certainly would look better. <laughs> Jimmy, humbled by these guys' first efforts, man. And this is not the first time we've done this kind of video on this channel. Won't be the last, man. Final you know, thoughts? for all the first issue stuff that we've looked at, these are spectacularly good compared to almost everybody's first effort. It's so rare for somebody to be good early, yeah, yeah. and especially at this level. That's goddamn right, man. I think they did fresh covers, so we get to see a little bit what at least Dave Gibbons looks like today. I think these are probably appropriated from the interior pages, just so you could say in previews that you have a Brian Ballin cover. But uh, there it is, man. You good to go, Jimmy? I am. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design. Go to your local comic shop. Tell them to pre-order that for you. Pick out the cover or covers that you like. And then uh, when you post on social media that you pre-ordered it, let us know where what store you pre-ordered it from. Give that comic shop a little bit of shine. But Hulk Grand Design is, is where all of my attention is. But issue one comes out in March. So... Let them know now to uh, save a copy for you. Red Room Comics, uh, trigger warnings, issue number one, coming out March. Uh, it's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Uh, let your comic shop know that you want that. Get it put on your pull list, man. Every issue completely self-contained. There will be four issues in the trigger warning miniseries. 
2022 season of comics. You can read these comics ahead of time on my Patreon, patreon.com slash headpiscor, three books get you the archive over there. And there's well over 200 pages of comics material on the Patreon as we speak. Uh, go to our link trees. You'll be able to get to all, all that stuff. Support the channel that way. Oh, what else do we have out there, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Given those Martian orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.